All right, guys, we finally got here on this old arch craft arch top made by the K Company between 1933 and 1937. We fixed the hole. We fixed the cracks, we fixed the back binding, we fixed the front binding, and we did some light work on the fretboard. We made a pit guard as well as the brackets to mount the pit guard because the pit guard is going to be the thing that we use to electrify this thing. Now, I've told you that I am not going to drill holes in this thing uh, to make it worse than it is. Everything I've done to it is you can take it back to where it was to make it period correct and that's the most important thing okay there's a couple things we could do um, for example let me put this up here I could put this lace pickup that I have that's a brand name lace it's got some adhesive on it it's a very thin profile I can put it up here I can stick it to the neck it sits below the strings and it's got a jack in it the downside to this is no volume control and it kind of depends on you looping this cord around then all it takes is a kid to pick it up and that's trashed this is about 200 bucks if you don't get it in the right place um, I've got this Gretsch pickup it's pretty ingenious it's got these tabs on the side so you don't really put anything in the neck uh, but you attach this to the side of the fingerboard so you trim out a little bit of the fingerboard and you put screws in there but this is pretty thick and um, it's not going to uh, fit on there without the strings coming into contact. We're playing the action really high. Now this one is pretty slick. It's meant to replace some pickups in some 1960 uh, and early 70 lawsuit guitars and it has a very thin profile. Now I can take this thing right here and drill four holes and mount this. Let's flip this around here like so. And look at that, that's pretty, it'll work just like it is. But remember I've told you I want to put cork underneath here and um, I really don't want to drill any holes in the top. So that said, I've got a different solution and that, if you've been watching the episodes, means I can put a pickup that's a thin profile like this on uh, and mount it to this pick guard and bolt it on with a tab. Well, I can show you with this one, this tab sits here like so, and then you would just drill these holes right here, and uh, it just floats there, and of course then we could put our our cork uh, on the back. All this would involve is cutting the finger, uh, or this uh, pick guard out in the right place and insetting this like so. Uh, we're gonna do something like that, but the first thing I need to do is I need to get the strings back on this thing which means I pulled off the trapeze and the strap button are going to come out. In order to electrify this, we're going to use these existing holes. We might make them bigger, um, but we're going to use the holes where they are at without drilling any other ones to electrify this. So some of that electrical work is going to involve um, the saddle, the trapeze saddle, when we put it back on and uh, replacing this uh, strap button here where is it I don't need I don't need that kind of talk from you I can hear you anyway we're gonna put that there by cell for now and we're gonna get some important housekeeping out of the way first thing I want to tell you about is while I was figuring out how to do these um, mounts and, and for this pig garden stuff I needed a couple of models and of course I'm watching eBay and marketplace and stuff all the time and I had a search for a pit guard for a K guitar because you know K made all kinds of different guitars for all kinds of people. I found one. Jerry Morgan at Music Village. Music Vill Village. I'm going to give you I'm looking overhead for electrical hazards. You don't want to electrocute yourself. Uh, it would be just my luck while electrocuting this guitar. I will get electrocuted. No way. Use your head. Anyway. Jerry Morgan at Music Village has a shop on eBay. I'm going to give you a link below, but Jerry Morgan had something I needed. I said, hey, Jerry, help me out on this because it's got the brackets and, and everything I need. It's complete, but I really don't want to pay that much for it. So um, Jerry's a good dude. He sent me this. Look at this. Do not covet this. Look at that. Ooh, that fits on there just right. Look. 
It's got the brackets. It's got everything. He sent me everything. This is a plethora of coveting if I've ever seen it. I'm going to give you a link below. You, you, I'm going to get all this stuff. She might as well forget about it. But he's got some awesome vinyls that you want to look through. Jerry Morgan at Music Village down below in the resources section. Check out Jerry's store. Okay, next, I've been getting uh, some comments on my uh, episodes here and on Instagram about how many arch tops I have. And people are getting the idea that I'm like some pawn shopper check into cash because people come to me with their old guitars that they picked up at a yard sale or looting their grandma's attic or something come to me when they need cash so guess what matchbook of the episode cash when you need it cash when you need it from the wow that's odd Newcomb company Newcomb company no not Newcomb like a radioactive tattoo on the side of your neck because you used to run cranes at a nuclear test site that you can't tell anybody about or even speak of it because they can still hear you and they're still all around. Anyway, the Newcomb Company. Cash when you need it. Whoops. Matchbook of the episode. Hey, you see this stack of matchbooks right here? You see that? I'm actually thinking about digitizing these and making these available so if you've seen my episodes you can go hey they're just the right size to put on my cigar box guitar my coffee can guitar my license plate guitar uh, I stop at bad pans dude that's a crappy idea you know what I mean next you know Gal Yuval, of course you do she's got a new album out Gal Yuval, one woman band has a lot of Mississippi Delta North Mississippi whole country uh, junkyard trash blues and the second song on that album has one of my license plate guitars and I personally think next to Bad Apple I like that song it's made on a cigar box from somebody else uh, but I, I personally think that Esperito Papago is what is that anyway it's it, what it is, is this best song on the album anyway get this I'm going to give you a link below. You're going to love this, trust me. Link below. And finally, in my never-ending urge to get my glasses on, to educate the uneducatable, I'm going to tell you about this book, Barrel House Words. Barrel House Words. These are words that would have been used around a barrel house. Right? Exactly. So we're going to start doing a Barrel House Word of the episode. Today's barrel house word or phrase is jump down j-u-m-p-d-u-w-n jump down to terminate a relationship they give us an example from furry lewis you know furry lewis right furry lewis who used a royal crown bottle for a slide. Do not covet my royal crown bottle from the late 50s. It's very small. It tells you a lot about Furry Lewis's stature. Anyway, this lesson isn't about that. But jump down. J U M P D O W N. Furry uses it in the context of to terminate a relationship. I'd rather hear the screws in my coffin sound. Than to hear my good gal says, I'm jumping down. Furry Lewis in Furry's Blues, 1928. You know what? I think I can find a link to that right up there, right about now. Anyway, I know this is all very electrifying for you, but we're going to get to the bench because before I can put the strings on this thing, I got to do some work on the ass end of it. I mean, the bottom of it. And we can only do that if it gets the better, so let's go. All right, guys, I want to start off by telling you, when I took the trapeze tailpiece, I guess they call it like this because it'll do this. Anyway, when I took this off of here, I uh, had done an episode called Tore Up Tailpiece, episode link right up there, right about now. Anyway, I had uh, seen a few of these 
in uh, in their natural original condition uh, but when I took this tailpiece off I had no idea that the screws and, and some about period correct as you see these flathead screws you don't see that much anymore in the V neck underneath like a Rhodesian ridge back and the celluloid binding and stuff is a giveaway but these screws aren't much bigger per se than the screws that we use to put the smaller screws on here to put our tuners on and that that kind of shocked me so it's pretty easy to pull these out so um, we are going to when we replace the the uh, tailpiece and put it back on it's of course the original one we're going to use a little bit sturdier screws uh, like this to get in a little bit deeper now one of these holes here is going to have to be drilled a little bit larger of course I'm going to uh, pilot screw these uh, in so they're bigger the, these are bigger than this of course so we don't want to split anything but um, yeah it just kind of shocked me how small these screws were to hold everything on that kind of taught me a lesson about uh, loading on these things the loading isn't so much right here as it is right here so it's kind of important to get that right anyway so we are going to put uh, this flat pickup it's got that tab on it it's tacked on about a little less than halfway up the thickness of the thing Usually I use these on license plate guitars. They're great pickups, and I get them out of Canada, but I just usually snap this off. We're going to leave this on because this will tuck up underneath the pick guard, and I can drill a couple of holes. I'll notch the pick guard to put this in, line it up on the bridge, and then, of course, we've got the usual culprits, a potentiometer for the volume, and a, um, I'm going to use a pin end jack now. Most of the time, people would what, want to put one uh, right over here on the curve of the body, uh, put a thin um, input jack. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to relieve us of this thing that slips out because I've seen so many of these slip out. And if, if, if you are playing, you slack off tension for a minute, and then this pops out, the guitar comes out on the ground. So we're going to bend this in like so. And then we're going to drill this a little bit bigger to get this through and mount that right there. Now, the most important thing about all this is the strings need to be grounded. If they're not grounded, you're going to get some buzz out of your coil pickup or humbucker. So, um, I've given you a couple of, of episodes that touched on how to... Um, solder these these connections up i'm going to give you a link to one right up there called uh soldering a coil pickup look for that one there's also in my playlist uh soldering up a, a piezo pickup and then there's a couple about stomp boxes and things like that and microphones so I'll, I'll you know what i'll just give you the playlist about pickups and and that like right up there so wherever you see that i there's something for you to dot up there at the end of the episode, and you'll pick up on exactly how to do this. But in terms of tools, we're just going to need the wire cutters, the shrink wrap. I'm big on shrink wrap, a wet sponge, a file uh, to keep our our soldering iron right. Now I love I love this soldering iron. It's the best one. Uh, after you make it. You solder something you keep putting against this wet sponge it'll keep itself clean but the typical stuff that we that we use now once I get all this soldered up I need to have this on here to put the strings back on now, I want you to notice I gave a lot of attention um, to this guitar and what I was doing with it in a playlist about this guitar I'm gonna give that to you right up there uh, Archcraft arch top playlist. It'll show you everything we've done in the order we've done it. But I told you then, let me show you how the camera can see me. Let me move it up just a little bit. There we go. I marked off where this bridge was before I took the strings loose when I first got this thing because I want to make sure that it is right 
back where it was. I won't have to worry about a bunch of intonation. Once I get my wiring done here, what I need to ground everything, then I can put the trapeze back on and string it up and that will help me inform where my work up here, like where the pickup is going to go, where there's string clearance to make it work, and um, where I need to notch out that pick guard that we made. So let's get some wiring going on right there. Okay, I'm going to replace these small, uh, shorter flathead screws that held the trapeze tailpiece on there with these bigger ones here. And so I'm going to need to drill the pilot hole just a little bit bigger and in one of them quite a bit bigger. So I'm just going to pop on this drill bit and I want to make sure that this goes all the way in as deep as those go. There we go. There's one. There's the other one. Now, I'm going to make one of these holes slightly bigger than the other two because I've got to run a wire through there and I really don't want to drill another hole to run the wire through. So I'm going to use this bottom hole and this hole's a little bit bigger, this bit's a little bit bigger, and I need to go all the way through this tail block here underneath here so that wire can exit. So I'm just going to go through. There we are. Just so you know, the tail blocks on these things are about that thick. But anyway, this is a little bit bigger. I want to make sure that's nice and smooth because I've got to feed a wire through there. When I'm working uh, wire on these guitars, I like to use three different colors. I've got this yellow, I've got this black, and I've got this white. Now, this is pre-tinned wire, and it's got, it's called pushback wire. It's got a, a cloth covering on it, and I can just push it back like that. See, I can just grab a hold of the end of it like this and pull it back. Look at that. See, I just push it back like that. Now, I am going to ground the strings again by making sure they come in contact with the trapeze tailpiece. Now, I always use black to ground things. Um, you know, that's pretty common. Everybody everywhere knows what that is. But I'm going to need to push this wire through, okay? And I'm going to need to get it. Let me get this out of here. I'm going to need to get it all the way over to this F-hole over here. I'm going to pull this wire up through this F-hole. Can you see it up there? Yeah. So I'm going to try to bend this a little bit. And I'm going to put it in this bottom hole. And I'm going to start working it through. And then try to get it. Once it's through, I'm going to kink it like this. And I'm going to work it until I can see it over here in this area, this F hole. Now I can take my hemostats. Once I've fished that wire through there. And put it up here like so. Yes, officer, that's exactly what they're for. What did you think they were for? Really, dude? Anyway. I can take this, feed myself some, and I want to make sure that I got more sticking out up here than I need because I am going to have to come all the way over into the vicinity of the bottom of this pick guard. So I'm going to make sure, you see I'm all the way up there, see that, here's the pick guard. My potentiometer is going to sit underneath here about there. I want to make sure I got plenty of room to wire this there. So once I've got that done, this F hole is not connected. The comma part of it, or the semicolon winky part of it is right there in a separate. So I've got that tied off there. Now, I don't want a bunch of flopping around in here. 
but I do want enough to, for this to be bare and to come up here and I don't want the coating to be here so this is the part that you should probably put these on and clamp them because if you get to tugging and everything too much you're not going to like that but anyway let's get this back down here where you can see what I'm doing there we go remember this is pushback wire so I'm going to cut about out to there about four fingers I, I don't know I don't know where I learned that trick maybe from the hemostats anyway about four fingers of wire then I'm going to take this and I'm going to skin it like so now see if I wouldn't have had this here and this tied up here be back in there I can do a little bit more I see. Okay, there we go now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to push this in as far as I can like that okay now I'm going to take this I'm going to wrap it around one time about where that hole is okay see that like that I'll center it up over the hole or try to then I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to stick it in this hole like so and bend it over see that you don't pay no attention unless I pull out chick flick pointer dude if I only commanded the respect that you do anyway I want to see that because the ground will come off of over here off the bottom of the potentiometer and it will come in here and now when we put this on remember this bottom hole is a little bit bigger so I'm just going to put this in here like this like so and then when I screw this one in here like this it's going to grab all that wiring and it's going to mash let me get a piece of tape here I am going to put more scratches on this thing than I intended to I'll put it under the trapeze there like so now when I screw these in you know that wire is underneath there and it's stuck in that hole and it's riding underneath here so that whole wire is going to be grounded on all these screws and of course you know that these screws have to be chick flick teal let me run them in now, I don't want to run those all the way in of course I got my clutch set on my drill um, so I don't strip things out, but I'm going to take this and I'm a stickler about pointing that up on everything. I won't be able to sleep at night, but we're going to run these last ones in like that by hand. Now, the good thing about this is, is they're tight, but that wire is right underneath here. So the strings coming into contact being metal and this trapeze metal we will not have to worry about grounding our stuff so now we can put the bridge on like it was we know exactly where it was and I can put strings on this now and that will inform us as to what everything is going to happen up here once I get that done then we'll have a look now y'all don't need to be watching me solder here but you'll remember that I told you that I use this yellow wire this pushback wire remember this it was just a few minutes ago been a while longer for me I use this pushback wire and I use a yellow to identify once this is in the body you can't tell what's what but this has a this uh, input jack has two lugs the taller one is ground the shorter one is positive so I'm going to use two different colors okay uh, so I can identify what's going on this is uh, ground and this will be uh, the hot wire now what, what I want to show you here is I'm going to end up feeding this through the guitar like I did this and then winding this all the way up here so it'll be as long as this other stuff is but I do not want uh, this these connections floating around in there for the life of this guitar once I get it in here 
with the possibility that they could ever come in contact with each other. So what I do is on the hot wire before I start doing any soldering, I slip this on here way up here like this and I put a kink in it because if this were to slide down where I'm soldering it'll what it will melt on here and shrink up and then I won't be able to do anything but I'll put that up there like that and I do this the same way with this one that way when they all end up in here there's no way that they can touch right there and then they get clamped in here and then go in but before I do that I want to make sure that this wire is fed up through here and the easy way to do that is I'm going to take these two of course I, I'm not ready for this yet I just wanted to make sure that I didn't forget and I'm going to wind these together like so and then I'm going to use some odd wire to make a wrap around here and keep them together so when I feed them through the guitar they stay together okay I want to tell you that the cleaners that uh, you use do a lot more for you than make your neck itch with all that starch they use they give you these hangers and these hangers work really well when I start fishing this wire up through here when it gets over here I can just reach down with a flashlight and pull them up like this wire hanger very expensive I don't see it saying Stumac or CB Giddy or anything there so you might want to try and make that yourself okay so this needs to fit in there and it doesn't so I'm going to take this humongo bit and drill through all the way through to get this through now it needs to go all through the end block of the body I don't want to tear this up any more than it is so I'm going to take some of my tape here and we'll put it there and like so and then since this is rocket science type stuff I'm going to use my rocket science pencil to say that hole needs to be right there look at that wow oh before I forget there seems to be some tension on the bench uh, Northrop Grumman pencil does not want to go inside the wink uh, can which is reserved for election pencils and love pencils and then uh, this one I guess is the smart pencils back here which has the pencil cut in half to do neck and whatever I guess this is the elite uh, most educated people on the bench anyway back to reality all right there we go that will fit in right there now I can pull this back off by removing this chick flick teal screw and get this right underneath there and that will hold that in place just fine and uh, I may violate my own rule by drilling a couple little holes right there for these fine chick flick teal screws now I told you I wouldn't drill any holes and uh, yeah you're dealing with somebody that's turning a $16 guitar into a $14 guitar let that be your lesson son okay check out our fancy wiring harness that we're going to put in through here now and we're going to as soon as we get in there we're going to make it bend that way and i'm going to look look for it to pop up over here somewhere oh my gosh look at that first try you know why because i put that little loop in the wire that way i can do this you see so now I'm going to watch this end pretty close, pull it, make sure there's not a bunch of slack there like that, okay? We'll leave about that much. Now I'm going to wind this around the one that's tied off so nothing is going to happen here. Now is when I slip this down, maybe take it off for a minute, and then I'm going to put my two little pieces of shrink wrap here on here there we go everything's soldered up shrink wrap in place now you tell you I have as always I have always found 
matchbooks to be dangerous, even though I have matchbook. The episode, which remember, was Nukem Finance Cash When You Need It. Matchbooks to me are very dangerous, especially this side. Sparks and bites that you saw. I always carry around a soldering iron with me to take care of that dangerous part. You see that? Then I just hold this whole pack right here and go like this. Oh, Mr. Safety is not very happy with me, is he? Hurry, hurry before the whole matchbook goes up in flames. Matchbooks are supposed to go up in flames. Yeah, I know. Shut up. There you go. Okay, so I've bound up my wiring harness together. And now I'm going to bend over these cliffs. And the thing about this is, is that however many, however many years it takes for this to come apart or something, it certainly isn't going to be because everything's not put together properly. Okay, I'll finish this in detail this. But now we can not have to worry about this popping out we've got a place to put our jack in and we've got a place to put our strap on the guitar oh look at that this guitar's got the prettiest butt butt i ever saw all right now we've got our wires pulled through here we got this mini humbucker that's going to be up here somewhere underneath here mount to that pit guard and then all these wires will come together on this volume pot, 500K volume pot, that's what I always use. I'm going to put that about right there. And, of course, I'm going to use my Sacrifice Patron box to make sure I don't damage anything valuable. So we're going to center that hole up right about there. I don't want to uh, cause you any trauma you ever been to Trauma, California? Never mind, that's Trona, sorry. Anyway, I'll be back with you in a minute. Ooh, look at that. Well, check me out, look at that. It's almost like it was planned that way. Once I put the knot on there, get everything soldered up, this thing's gonna pop right too. And I can hide these wires coming up underneath here through that F hole right there, and you'll not be able to see anything. I got one more fancy stunt to show you. All right, I hear y'all out there. You're like, hey, what about all that wire you got right there? You're gonna just stuff it in there, it's gonna be flopping all over the place. This is false. What's gonna happen here is, we've got this all bundled up together, and we're, we're gonna know how much we need, and we're gonna pin it right underneath here. Well, how are you gonna do that, you're asking yourself. Well, sit back and get ready to be disamazed. You remember our friend, the cookie tin from Denmark, if you ain't Dutch? Where is it? You ain't much? Yeah, remember that? Well, we're going to combine that with the first thing we've ever had a Patron box be useful for in life. And we're going to take a piece of the carcass of this and make this. And then we're going to take this and cut a strip out of it. We're going to go into the wink can and we're going to pull an election pencil and we're going to wrap it around here like this. Remember them Hot Wheel car loop-de-loop -loop thing in 1970, 60, I don't even know. Anyway, just pay attention. See that? Look at that. Now, through the miracle of my mind, we're going to take a couple of chick flick teal screws a drill and all the scrap apparatus I just showed you and we are going to make this. Do you see that? Now we're going to mount this under the guitar like so, under the face of the guitar. How are we going to mount it to the guitar? We're going to use hide glue. You know why? Because if I ever have to take it off, all I have to do is heat it up a little bit. It'll pop right off. So we're going to take this thing. We're going to fit, feed all the wires through there like this. Can you see it in the camera? There we go. I'm going to slide that down there. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? And then we're going to put that off the side right now. Now you're asking yourself, what kind of brilliance can come up with something like that? Well, there's your answer right there. This is the kind of work that should win me the International Society of Oilfield Trash Nobel Peace Prize Award for Engineering or some other related field like that anyway. 
um, you're asking yourself, dude, how can you be like this? I'm like, dude, you know what? It's been in my family forever. My grandfather was the inventor of the two-story outhouse. That's right. Okay, that's enough. Back to reality. All right, we got everything wired up. Last thing that we need to do here is mount this mini humbucker. It's got a tab on it. Now, what I've done is we're going to slip this under here. And I've calculated where this is going to ride under the strings at the right place. Mysteriously, this will sit right where that bolt is right there. Now, if you remember, we put that on with a nylon insert washer so it doesn't back itself out. And then we got a, 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 a regular washer and this is what's holding that on. Now we're going to vary the length of this a little bit and we're going to use some of these rubber spacers to have this sit here. So we're going to take and drill a pilot hole right where that needs to be right there. One hole through this like so and then uh, we'll drill the pilot hole first after we mark it and um, drill a bigger hole. Now we'll mount that there and we will tuck the wire up underneath here and secure it and this thing is ready to scream so let me get that done and we're fixing to have some sound out of this puppy oh last thing before I forget we got this cork paper with adhesive on the back I want to make sure you can tell that I've cut the corner off of that already and this will mount right here we want to put this here just in case something happens where if the bottom of this humbucker touches the top of the arch top that something will provide some buffer to it some softening and that's what we want to do okay now we'll get to work and fire this puppy up all right there it is all hooked up ready to go Let's get this thing on an amp did i ever show you my finger picking technique Anyway, we're going to work on that a little bit. All right, guys. This is what I look like when I'm being paid by the taxpayer without the guitar, of course. Uh, you know what? Maybe that would help me. I should take this to work. It's not like I don't have any in my office, right? You know that. Um, so, we have this period correct. How many times are you going to, am I going to say this? Arch craft, arch top, made by the K Company sometime between 1933 and 1937. It was in good shape when I got it, except for the hole in the body, the crack, uh, the frets sticking out, the discolored, nothing here, missing there, that kind of stuff. We got all that fixed up, and I decided, you know what? I wonder what it would sound like if we modernized this thing. So I'm going to put a slide on, and we're going to hear this thing with and without a pickup remember and i don't play guitar at all we're going to try to get this in somebody's hands that knows how to play it and i've talked a couple times about who that could be right but i got to thinking about something here uh oh this is going to be dangerous yeah so point being how many bottlenecks do you think were laying around in between 1933 and 1937 when prohibition was going on, you just didn't find a bottleneck. And I think the stuff that they were serving was probably coming out of mason jars. And I never really tried to do a mason jar for a site. Hey, I should make an episode about that. Uh, watch for that right up there, right about never. Anyway, I think, you know what? We're not going to get the period correct sound. So what would we have done? Well, some people might have had a pocket knife, so they might have done you know this sliding up and down a pocket knife but maybe not some people had a harmonica i mean uh i had a coffee can guitar that reverend paid played and he was alternating with a harmonica and using a slide maybe if there's enough cards up there that is an episode that you can see right up there uh called play my guitar or something like that but more likely what is the thing that they would have had it's right a butter knife so if I take a butter knife and hold it like this, you know, like, like they do in Minnesota when they're eating regular. Anyway, you just hold it like this. 
and you play some chords. So we're going to take this butter knife here and we're going to try and see what this thing sounds like without any electricity. <laughs> that incredible so now moment of truth we're going to turn up the electricity on this thing some tells me that this old butter knife isn't going to be quite adequate for what we're going to need we're going to need something improved new and improved so i think what we're going to do ooh, there's that buzz is we're going to get a little bit bigger butter knife <laughs> You saw it here, brother. All right, here it is. Moment of truth. Oh yeah, that's great. Let me do it. I'm going to find somebody to play the same thing as we play it and give an episode on that. But there it is, how to put a pickup on an archtop guitar, complete with volume controls, without drilling any holes in it. And uh, it seems anticlimactic, doesn't it? Well, maybe to you, but you weren't over here on the bench with me. Okay, give me a like. Whether you like it or not, you got to give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe. We're going to go off now into new land. I think we're going to hear somebody play this uh, that's good at it in the next episode. Now we're going to go off into some new stuff that I, me, already did the episode, so I know what they are, but I'm not going to tell you. Hey, see you next time. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I have fun doing this, and I hope you learned something. And uh, don't be afraid to go out and buy an old junk pile archtop because it's not that hard. See you next time.